Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another Helgen Loco review. Needless to say, I haven't had very much luck with Helgen steam locomotives. The ones I've tried have been pretty terrible, in my opinion. So today I've decided I'm going to change things up a little bit and try one of Helgen's diesels, or more specifically, one of their diesel shunters. So on your recommendation, I have picked up this. This is the Helgen Class 07 shunter. And like a lot of Helgen's locos, the RRP for this, given the size of the little thing, is pretty high. It's £139.95. However, I was able to pick up mine for just £94 from Hatton's, which is obviously much better. I mean, for an 060, a super detailed 060 locomotive, tank engine, diesel shunter, £100 is about the going rate when you look at the Hatton's P-Class, when you look at the Peckett, and when you look at the Hornby Terrier. Yeah, 140 quid is far too much, in my opinion, unless it's super quality. So, provided this is super quality and super detailed and a super runner, I'm saying super a bit too much I feel, this should be a good one. So let's get it out and see how it looks. All right, and to be honest with you, looking through the front of the box, I'm actually getting quite a good vibe from this one. It looks really, really neat and tidy. Obviously, it's far too early to say, but I'm hoping, to, I'm just going to try and go into this basically with a positive frame of mind, a positive attitude, and hopefully this one will turn out pretty good. For £94, this has the real potential to be a great loco, doesn't it? Right, let me show you the end of the box then. So the version I have is 29301. It's a class 07 V107001 and HNRC, which I believe is the sort of livery of this one. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about the HNRC company. My choice of livery may be to do with the price. I won't confirm or deny that, but it's a possibility, shall we say. Okay, let me open up this box then. There's nothing much to see on the rest of the box, by the way, so we can get on straight away and take this out. And as always from Helgen, the packaging is really good. I mean, look at this. We've got a nicely air cushioned cardboard sleeve if you like and then it's got the blister pack inside yeah it looks really really well protected anyway let's take a look at the paperwork which we have here so it says the helgen 2900 number series let's have a look so ruston and hornsby d2985 to d2998 yeah these are made by the ruston and hornsby company which is pretty interesting i can see straight away just caught my eye that this model has a three pole motor what are they saying about that a three pole motor and heavy die cast chassis ensure running characteristics that will meet most modelers demands not sure I agree with that. I would have said a five pole motor would meet more modelers' demands, but we will see. Maybe the performance will be good. Still, though, you'd expect for the RRP for all stops to be pulled out. So we have a history there, so feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to learn more about the shunters, although I will give you some history in just a second. Body removal, that's pretty important, actually. So, yeah, that looks as though it's quite easy to do. I might try that if we're going to have a look at the uh, mechanism. DCC operation, yeah, that's fine. And wow, look at that. That is the parts list. Crikey. And as always, very impressive machines, aren't they, to consist of so many parts when you think of how small the actual product is. Very impressive. All right, let's take a look then. Right, so on the bottom, I can see we do have some details in the detail bag, which is pretty good. Let's take a look at some of these then. They are stuck down. Okay, so we have white discs. They look like head coat discs, but they've got sort of numbers written on them, so maybe they're for a different purpose. We've got the NEM couplings, the tension locks in there, and all sorts of buffer beam detail, which are sort of all sprued together. So yeah, I mean, that's quite a lot of work to do for yourself. I mean, you've even got to take them off the sprues, haven't you? And then stick them onto the model if you want the thing to look its best. However, the fact that all of those are not actually pre-fitted to the buffer beams may be a good thing, because obviously sometimes they can foul up the, uh, the NEM couplings and such if they're dangling down in the way so yeah maybe that is for the best i usually don't fit that sort of thing for fear of that anyway let's open up the pack and see what this is like i'd be very interested to learn packaging really really good so they've gone to quite some length to ensure that the locos are not damaged in transit which is pretty good let's peel back the plastic wrappings then and have a look at the loco how much does it weigh all right yeah the weight feels pretty good and i have to say this looks like it was made by a different company entirely to the company that made those steam locos of mine. Look at the finish on that. The level of detail looks astonishing. The weight feels okay. It's not astonishingly heavy, but it's more than adequate, I would say. The decoration looks superb. The number of separately fitted parts is quite impressive. 
Well, and look at that, we've got the proper wheels as well with the hidden axles. So Helgen can do that. Why do all of their steam locos look so poor in that department? This one looks superb. That is really quite impressive. Like I say, it looks like this was made by an entirely different manufacturer because every aspect of this looks really, really neat and tidy. I've not had a proper look at this yet, so I'll have to look more closely and then report back during the detail section. But yeah, so far for £94 is what I paid from Hattons, link in the description. This looks astonishing, it really does. All right, so close look at this in just a second then. But first of all, here's a little bit of history on the 07s. So the British Rail Class 07 was first introduced back in 1962 to the southern region of British Railways and they were built by Ruston and Hornsby as we learned on the instruction booklet. 14 of them were built in total so not a huge batch by any means and they contained diesel engines which generated power for electric motors as is often the case with diesel locos. The class was designed to replace the steam fleet of E2s and USA tanks on the Southampton docks hence the tiny wheelbase of these shunters in comparison to other shunters such as the 08 perhaps, which I think gives them quite an interesting and unique looking profile. Performance was generally pretty good as well, except for a tendency for the axle boxes to overheat, which could cause damage. This mainly happened in transport though, say when they were hauled by faster engines, for example, to be delivered, that kind of thing. So not much of an issue in normal use as far as I know, although others may know better. And since their maximum speed was around 28 miles an hour, you can't imagine these things getting too warm at those sorts of speeds. Exactly half of them were withdrawn and scrapped, with the remaining seven in preservation to this day. So there it is then, the Helgen 07 up close and personal for you. And yeah, I think my first impressions were pretty much spot on. The quality is generally speaking absolutely fantastic on this loco, exceeding my expectations quite considerably actually. Now the quality is not still 100%. I mean, we do have a couple of glue marks as you can see on some of the handrails. Yeah, a little bit messy, but those are kept to a minimum and there certainly aren't very many. The other thing was that when I turned the model upside down during my inspection, I heard something fall on the floor. Turns out it's one of these handrails on the sides of the cab. It just slid out of its housing because uh, it wasn't glued in properly. So it's a little bit of a shame about that, but generally the quality seems really, really good. It weighs quite a lot. It weighs 199 grams, which is about right. Uh, it's about 50 grams lighter than my Backman 08, but it is heavier than other similar sized locos, such as the J70, the Backman E1, and the DJM 1361 class. So the weight is not an issue. It gets most of its weight from the die cast running plate, or if running plate's not the correct term, I'll settle for lower body. Uh, yeah, all of that is die cast down there, which is really good. And it's quality die cast as well. There's nothing like those sort of scratch marks that were on the 1361. It looks really, really good. And that leads us on to the decoration, which is also superb as well. I mean, look at the amount of tiny prints on the side of the cab. You've got all sorts of print work there. The engine housing has all those little warning prints on there, which look really, really good. In fact, all over the place, there is a lot of warning prints. One thing that is really impressive is the wasp stripes. Look at those. They are very, very well done. There's no paint bleed between the two colours really really top notch and that really goes for wherever two different colors meet as you can see the gray of the top of the engine housing and the orange of the rest of the body is just perfect and you've got that sort of black lining on there as well the decoration is superb i would never have expected it to be quite this good the number of separately fitted parts is also absolutely phenomenal. I mean, just look, are these, are these little covers? You've got separately fitted handles on those. The number of handrails is just insane. It's a shame that some of them have dropped off because it's been ages since uh, any detail has dropped off any model. So that is a bit of a disappointment, but you know, it's to be expected, I suppose. Look around this end now. <laughs> the number of details on here so we have what looks like an etched grill it might just be made of plastic that but it looks really good you've got separately fitted wiring on there all sorts of different vacuum fittings some of them are hanging up uh, presumably ready for use so many separately fitted handrails you've got the screw link couplings pre-fitted they might be in the way for the number of details in the detail bag it's a shame that those weren't one of them because they hang right down over the nem sockets which isn't very practical as soon as i fit one of the nem couplings on there those screw links are going to be right in the way which is a shame uh, and helgen often do that i don't know why the other manufacturers all seem to realize that if you want those that's a good optional extra because it gets in the way of the couplings helgen 
always seem to fit them. I don't understand that. We do, however, have nice metal buffers which are sprung. Look at that. And they're all properly sprung as well. That is really, really nice. The cab is superb as well. Just like the rest of the model, it's fitted with a plethora of separately fitted parts. You've got the windscreen wipers on the windows, the separately fitted and separately painted horns on top of the roof there. Inside, you have all sorts of details. I mean, most of it's picked out in paint as well. The cab detail is really, really good. The glazing is superb as well. Look at that, it's perfectly flush with the outside of the loco body, which looks fantastic. I mean, everywhere you look, there is a massive amount of detail. Look at the tiny little handles on different sort of service boxes on the side of the thing. And over on the other side, you've got all this separately fitted pipe work as well, which all looks fantastic. No flashing on it, nicely fitted, no glue marks. Really, really impressive. And as I already noted earlier on, these properly moulded wheels with the hidden axles look far, far better than the type that just have the massive shiny axles poking out. Yeah, I mean, that would have looked ridiculous on this model in particular, <laughs> given its size. I'm so glad that they've done that. And I think the benefits of doing that properly are obvious, aren't they? It's wonderful. It really is very, very good. Probably the best detailed loco I've ever had from Helgen, which is really, really impressive. I love it. I absolutely love it. At this point, I've not taken the thing apart yet. I've not seen the mechanism, so maybe that will be a little bit of a letdown. I have a feeling that it might be, given some of my past experiences. But again, I'm going to go into that section with an open mind, and I will report honestly on what I find. So with that, let's get it down onto the track and see how this thing performs. Okay, folks, so there it is, the beautiful model down onto the track. You now need to prepare yourselves for the frustrating part because I've just had a lot of fun taking this thing apart. So, first major issue. The lower body, so that is the buffer beams, the running plates, all of that stuff, is part of the chassis. The upper body is part of the body, right? Why have they done that? Why have they been different from all other manufacturers time immemorial and made those separate? It's so much easier just to have a chassis which comes out of the body for serviceability for DCC fitting. Doing it like this means that the body comes off the chassis in three sections, yes, three sections, and also because the lower body and upper body share some of the same details, there are loads, and I mean loads, of details that come out of place. They leave their sockets and they have to be guided back into those sockets upon reassembly, which is so incredibly frustrating. And because a lot of those details aren't glued on properly, loads of them just come off in your hands and you're left with a massive headache. And yes, you have to do that if you decide to DCC fit the loco. And to add insult to injury, you've got these self-tapping screws, which are rubbish. You can just screw and screw and screw, and they just don't bite at all. Um, rubbish, really poor quality. Once again, Helgen paying no attention to the model's life after it's left the factory. How easy is this thing to dismantle and service? How easy is it to fit a DCC chip? Not very easy at all, incredibly frustrating. We already know that the Loco has just a three-pole motor, which isn't very good, and also removing the base of the Loco reveals no proper bearings. We just have the axles going straight onto the metal chassis with quite a large contact area as well, which suggests quite a lot of friction. Not very impressed with this thing mechanically. It's all very well a manufacturer uh, producing a beautiful model and sticking a £140 RRP on it, but it really needs to meet the standard. And unfortunately, yet again, the mechanism shows a degree of incompetence. However, that is to say nothing of the actual performance of the Loco, which I have not tried yet. So straight out of the box, let's give this a go. I should say this has not yet been run in and it will take 30 minutes in each direction according to the instructions before this Loco will run at its best. But straight out of the box, just out of interest, here we go. Let's see, turning it up. <laughs> it's dead. It moved. Oh, there we go. Wow. And we do have lights. I did see some lights come on. Although we've got one white. Oh, no, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, for shunting lights, one white and one red is as it should be. Uh, they only do work in one direction, so you only get them when their loco's running forwards, which is a bit of a shame, isn't it? But no, they are good, and those lamps working is really quite cool. The actual performance, I mean, let's have a look. Bear in mind that these run at, well, the instructions say 20 miles per hour. Wikipedia says 28. That's 50% speed. It does seem a little bit on the speedy side, but not egregiously so, I would say. I have to say, though, it is reasonably smooth, isn't it? That is not bad at all. What is the crawl like, I wonder? Let's see. Turning up. 
turning up. Oh. Well, that wasn't very good. Let's try it in reverse. I mean, I'm not going to pass any judgment yet. Oh, it's better in reverse. Look at that. As I say, I'm not going to pass any judgment yet because it's not been running. But that's good. I wonder if it just stalled when I tried it forwards. Yeah, that's actually reasonably smooth through a, for a three-pole motor. That's not bad. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's good. That is nice. If a bit unreliable, but I'm hoping that will go away once it's been run in. So let's get this going. 50% half speed, 30 minutes in each direction. See how it is after that. All right, well, that is really nice and smooth. It's taking curves without derailments and it looks great. So I'll let this run and I'll be back with you in just a few minutes. All right, folks, well, I am back and running in has concluded. I have to say that was pretty much faultless. No derailments, no cutting out, no nothing. Really, really nice performance. One thing that was a massive frustration was fitting the coupling. Now, the NEM pockets are sort of seated deep inside the body, so they're hard to get to anyway. They also rotate, which means that actually fitting the coupling is a nightmare because they just rotate out of the way and they don't go in properly. I thought to start with, you know, no, this is fine. The rotation will mean that wagons will couple without any problems and they'll handle curves all right. Well, no, because the coupling is literally going right to the hilt. Uh, which means that no rotation is possible at all. It also means that the back of the coupling hook is pressed right up against the loco body. And yes, these are the couplings that came with it. I haven't just used the wrong sort. The back of the coupling hook is pressed against the body so that they are super stiff and they don't move at all. I mean, you have to move them by hand and they stay wherever you put them, which is a bit of a nightmare. The answer, I guess, is to pull the coupling out a little bit so that it's not properly in the socket but then you run the risk of it dropping out. It's certainly not ideal. And every single Helgen Loco I have has an issue of some description with the coupling. I, I don't understand how they can get it wrong. It's a very silly design. Anyway, let's see if that crawl is any better then, shall we? Now that it's running, it has actually had 30 minutes in each direction. I tend to usually do 20, but I've done 30 because that's what it said on the instructions. And as you can see, that crawl is superb. Was it forwards or backwards? It wasn't the best at, out of the box. Uh, well, let's try both and we'll see. Yeah, no, that seems pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that is more than adequate. To say that's on DC, that is pretty good. Let's see, oh, wrong way. <laughs> let's see how it takes the express point. We've got a dead zone just here. That's a reasonable shunting speed, I would say. There we go, yeah, that's pretty good. Let's see if it'll take it backwards. A Little bit of a jolt, perhaps. And when I was testing it earlier, I did see some cutouts on the points, but that seems a lot better now, having been running. Yeah, that's good. That's great. So, uh, he says, not holding his breath too much. Let's see if we can couple to some wagons. I've set up quite a reasonable rake here, not too many. I have tested the pulling power, 0.21 newtons, which isn't bad. It's not bad. It's not as much as the 08 or anything like that, but it's a fair amount. It should be enough for around 15 coaches, and for shunting purposes, that should be fine. So let's go couple, see if the couplings actually work this time. <laughs> okay, watch those couplings. All right, did it couple? I can't see from where I am. <sighs> No, it did not. Hands up who's surprised. <laughs> Yet yeah, literally every Helgen Loco I have doesn't couple properly. They either droop or there's some other problem. My 52, the couplings come out. <sighs> Try again. I think it'll just be because that other coupling hook is completely stiff. Push them right back. <laughs> Any good? No, still no good. Come on, keep trying. How about if I give it a good ram? It's not realistic, of course. But maybe that'll do it. No. <laughs> and by the way, yes, the coupling hooks do keep coming off um, because they're being pressured from behind, so they do keep dropping off. Come on, I'm going to keep doing this till it works. Right, that was a big ram. Totally unrealistic, but it has actually worked. Why can't they get the couplings right? I don't understand. £140 is the RRP, and the couplings are not fit for purpose. I'm really going to crack down on this sort of thing from now on, because it really grinds my gears. No, but now it's up and running. That looks quite nice, does that? So I'll show you what else I'm going to be running. I have other locos that ran at Southampton docks. So we have the USA dock tank here, it's coming in. 
with an ocean of ocean wagons. Here we go, check out my review of that loco if you'd like to. There we go, quite a nice run of that one. Again, not the best mechanism really, but works all right, as you can tell. And then on the inside line, another loco known for work at Southampton Docks. It is the E2, a failure in real life, but a massive success in fiction, would you believe? There we are, I'm sure you can imagine why. All right, see which other shunting locos you can spot, see if you can see an odd one out, and we'll catch up with the Helgen. And actually, once this thing is up and running, and heaven help you doing that, by the way, if you're a DCC user, because that disassembly was a nightmare, even for me, who's experienced with tinkering with these things. But once it is going, it looks fantastic. It's by far the best looking Helgen loco I've got. And the fact that it costs less than £100 is pretty impressive too, so I am quite happy with that overall. I'm not looking forward to servicing it, and I might seriously consider just not doing it. I might just clean the wheels and oil the bearings and that'll be it. But while it works, it is great. I love it. And thank you E2 for getting in the way there. <laughs> yeah, for 94 quid, I'm struggling to criticise it too much, to be honest. It could be better, sure, but it could be worse. There we are. Seems to handle these with no problem either. I mean, shunting duties, difficult to imagine it having to haul a much bigger train than this. And anything less, even on a gradient, is going to be fine, isn't it? So, fit for purpose does get a tick besides the coupling yeah that's true actually I forgot about that it's not much of a good shunter if it can't couple so here are some of my ratings then for the Helgen class 07 yeah overall it was a really impressive model let down a little bit by the same old quality issues and a few of the old poor design choices I think but the level of detail really can't fault it I was so impressed by the sheer number of separately fitted parts the decoration every aspect of the detail was really really impressive I would say performance similarly when you consider the mechanism inside this it actually runs reasonably nicely as a shunting loco those couplings are no good at all they don't engage properly half the time not very good unfortunately not fit for purpose there i think i've been quite generous in only knocking off one star there but yeah i'm not trying to be too harsh here pulling power is okay for a shunter i would say 0.21 newtons on the drawbar about 15 coaches on straight and level track which is more than the hornby j15 the b2 but it's only two-thirds of the oh shunter i mean it's okay it's more than enough i would say for the purpose the mechanism i've knocked off a couple of stars off uh, first of all for the three pole motor second of all for the lack of proper bearings on the wheel set for a loco with an rop of 140 pounds those are not really acceptable besides that though the mechanism seems to be reasonably competent you can tighten up all of the screws and the thing works properly so that has to be a thumbs up the quality i've given two and a half stars i really don't like the way the body comes apart <laughs> in three bits with the self-tapping screws and all those details popping off that's not very good i did have a few issues with handrails so that has to be another star off and also the mechanism i've knocked off a star for that because the quality there isn't fantastic value for money then is not as bad as i thought would i recommend paying 139 pounds 95 or anything close to that no would i recommend paying over 100 for this no actually not when the hatton's p class costs 99 pounds and that has proper working couplings, it has proper bearings, it has a five-pole motor. I'm a simple guy. If another loco comes along with worse stats than that, it wouldn't make sense to me, personally, to buy that for more money when the features are worse. So that's a little bit of a shame. Uh, overall, then, that is 7.29 out of 10. Yeah, overall, I think I could probably recommend this for the £94 that I paid. So, yeah, go get them. Links in the description. Obviously, bear in mind, they are not perfect. They are a little bit on the fragile side. Not the best build quality in the world, and certainly not the best mechanism in the world. But overall, for the right price, these were a fairly decent buy, I would say. Into the logbook we go there, and there it is, 24th, above the Hornby Barracaldo and below the Backman City of Truro. Yeah, pleasantly surprised overall. I must say, those working lamps are a great little extra as well, aren't they? It's fantastic. The other locos are playing up today. They're trying to do everything they can to cover up the Helgen. 
Usually I'd be fine with that. I mean, those steamers need covering up. But this one, no, I, I'm going to be proud to run this one, I'd say. There we go. And I think there's a lot to be said about the livery as well. Look at that. Very interesting. All right, so today's poll question then, very simple one. Would you buy this? For the right price, would you buy it? There we go. Uh, if I could send it back and get the choice again, whether or not to buy it, do you know, I think I probably still would. That's a surprising answer, but yeah, I think I would. That would be a yes from me. So there you have it then, folks. I hope you enjoyed that one. What an incredibly well-detailed little model that one was. And I think the lights just finish it off beautifully. Very, very well detailed. So that aspect of the model was a real pleasure. Uh, let me know in the comments. Do you agree with what I've said? Do you disagree? As always, it's great to hear from you and what you think. I um, mean, it's very important in a way. So please do that. And I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your company. Have a great week or weekend. And I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.